I'm wearing black, so I'm probably covered in animal fur. Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. So today I kind of wanted to just do a very informal chit chatty video talking about how I rate books. I don't think that's something I've ever really discussed on my channel before. Not that it's anything super complex or in depth or anything of that nature, but I find it really fascinating because not only how we read books is subjective, but how we rate books is subjective as well. And so I kind of wanted to open up a discussion about how we rate books and just the rating systems in general, because I know that there can be some problems with it. And that kind of leads me to what inspired me to make this video. So there were two things actually that happened in the same week. One, I was on YouTube and a video popped up in my recommendations about somebody who was reacting to a list of the 50 best books of all time. I don't know if this was a recent video. I don't know if this was a list that was recently announced. I wasn't paying that close attention to it. But seeing this video pop up in my recommendations really got me asking questions like, how on earth can we make a determination about the 50 best books of all time? Because like I said, reading is entirely subjective. And even books that have seemingly withstood the test of time, when they're read in the context of today, not everybody appreciates them. I know that I am certainly not one that can really understand the merit of classics. They were probably very revolutionary in their day. And that's probably why they have withstood the test of time is because what they were putting out back then was probably pretty controversial for their time. And so we can look today on those books and understand why they were important in the day, but not necessarily why they're considered the best books of all time. And it got me thinking about what they use to evaluate that system. Does it have to be well written along with really dynamic and well-developed characters? Does there have to be a pretty fascinating plot as well as a strong message included? Like what is going into these evaluations of the 50 best books of all time and do they get voted on? Like how many votes does a book have to have in order to be determined the 50 best books? So just seeing that video pop up in my timeline got me asking a lot of questions because I could not possibly fathom how one person or even a group of people or even millions of people could come together and say that they have determined the 50 best books of all time. That got me thinking about my own rating system and how I rate books and what I look for in books. And then on booktube I was watching a video and the person was discussing ratings and how they kind of want to abolish the idea that three stars is a bad rating. And that kind of got my hackles up. I was like, hmm, you know what? I kind of want to state an alternative point of view. So I really feel like three stars is the most controversial rating in terms of how people view it. And so I'm on here not necessarily to say that three stars is a bad rating because I don't think it's a bad rating, but I don't think it's a good rating either. If I see that a book is consistently rated three stars, I am not likely to read that story because I don't think it's worth my time. And we'll get there in a second. All that to say, those were the inspirations behind this video. And so I just wanted to film this really short, informal, chit chatty video. I don't even really have anything planned as to what I'm going to say. We're just going to kind of roll with it, go through my rating system. And then I'm going to open it up to you to tell me how you rate books and kind of what you look for in order to make your determination on what you rate a book. And yes, I will probably briefly rant here about the fact that Goodreads still has not implemented half star ratings. Y'all, we need to get the bookish community together. We need to sign a petition. We need to march on Goodreads headquarters. We need to get them because they know. And at this point, it is intentional. They're doing it to piss us off and we need to show them that we're not going to take it anymore. Okay, I'm done. Back to the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the lowest, which is naturally a DNF or you did not finish. I don't rate DNF'd books because obviously I did not finish the book. And so I don't feel like I'm an expert enough on this book in order to rate it. Now, I guess you could make the argument that if I did not finish it, it would be a one star because I absolutely hated the book. But I can also admit that maybe if I had continued with the book there might be something redeemable about it later on and maybe I could have enjoyed it a little bit more so DNF means I didn't finish it I don't know what all the book contained but I know that what I read was not doing it for me and so what I actually do is I have created a shelf on Goodreads specifically for DNF books it is an exclusive shelf if you have an exclusive shelf on Goodreads kind of like the red and the want to read shelves any books on those shelves cannot be on any other shelves and what's good about that is if I'm reading a book and I mark it as DNF it's only going to be on the DNF DNF shelf and it's not going to be under red or anything like that. And I don't think it's even going to count towards the books that I've read for the year, which is what I want to avoid. I don't want a DNF book to go towards my reading count for the year. So I have created an exclusive shelf specifically for DNF books. Now I did want to say that not every book I start and stop, I consider a DNF. I think I've mentioned this a couple times before, but I kind of view it as a trial of the book. But anytime I start a book and only get a short ways into it, and I'm talking about maybe only a couple of chapters into it, and I decide that it's just not 
not for me. I don't think I'm gonna love it. It's not fit my vibe. If I decide to stop those books, I am not considering them a DNF. I'm considering it like a free trial. I got a free trial of this book. I started it, I didn't like it, and I'm gonna cancel my free trial. No harm, no foul. I'm only considering a book a DNF if I've gotten a fair amount of the way in, maybe 25% of the way into the book. If I have invested that much time in the book and I know that I'm not gonna finish it, I feel confident enough in placing that as a DNF. So I just wanna clarify there that if you go to my DNF shelf, you're not gonna see nearly as many books as I've started and stopped because only a handful of books do I really get far enough into to actually consider a book a DNF. Moving on into one stars, I very, very, very rarely rate a book one star. I think I could probably count on one hand the number of one stars I've ever given in my entire life. And that is just because if it looks like a book is leaning towards a one star, almost always going to be a DNF. If I'm rating a book a one star, it means I really hate almost absolutely everything about it and why am I going to continue that book? And so more likely than not, I'm going to DNF a book rather than continue with it and rate it a one star. So there are very, very few one stars on my shelves. Now a two star rating definitely means that I disliked the book and most of the things about the book more than I liked anything about it. But if I'm rating a book a two star, that obviously means that I finished it. There was something good enough about it that I was willing to continue with it. And there was something at least mildly redeemable about it. Like there is something in this book that I can understand why people love it or maybe why it is popular, but it really just wasn't for me. And for the most part, I didn't find very much positive about it at all. For example, Twisted Love by Anna Huang, which was one of my least favorite books of 2022. But that book is wildly popular. That whole series is wildly popular. And I hated the first book with a passion. However, I felt like that book overall was very well written. I liked Anna Huang's writing. And for the first portion of the book, I was into it and I was invested in it. And I liked the banter between the two characters, but it was just the overall direction that she took with the plot and the actions of the characters that I could not get behind and ended up taking that book from what could have been like maybe a strong four stars all the way down to a two stars. So in the end, that book was only mildly redeemable to me because there were some positive aspects to it, like the writing style. And that's why I gave it a two. That's why I didn't DNF it. That's why it wasn't a one star. If I'm writing a book a two, it's something that I feel is okay enough to warrant finishing, but it is not a positive book in my opinion. It's not something that I will ever want to reread. It's something that I'm fairly sure that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life because of how much I disliked it. And it's possibly something that I'm going to be able to rant about for a fair amount of time because of how much I disliked the book. So that is what a two star means to me. Now, here's where we're getting into the controversial part. I would much rather rate a book two stars than rate a book three stars. Now, a lot of people want to say that a three star is not a bad rating because it's very middle of the road. In fact, it is smack dab in the middle. So that typically means it's not a bad book, but that also means it's not a good book either. And you know what that means to me? That means it is a forgettable book. There are typically two classes of three star reads for me, but they both have one thing in common in that they are going to be utterly forgettable. For the most part, if I read a book and rate it three stars, I have found it the epitome of mediocre. And how angry does that make me to know that I have invested in a book that doesn't even give me enough to be passionate about one way or the other, not even on the negative side. There is nothing about this book that I can even pinpoint enough to rant and rave about. There's nothing about it that I can pinpoint to praise about. Nothing about it. It was just literally meh. It was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. And I am certainly not going to remember it. And it actually makes me angry when I see a three star read on my shelf because I'm going to look at it and I'm not going to be able to remember almost anything about it. And I hate that. I would much rather keep a two star read, one that I can look at and immediately have this passion in me, no matter how negative that passion is, because I'm going to be able to talk to you about it. I'm going to be able to say, this is why this book was a two star and this is why I hated it. And this is why I don't believe that this is a good book. But a three star read, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to be like, I can't tell you anything about this book because I don't remember it. That is why I don't believe a three star read is a good book. Now, the second category of books that I typically rate three stars are books that are overall a positive reading experience for me. Like I really enjoyed them from start to finish. And so I didn't really get a mediocre meh feel from them while I was reading, but they're still going to be forgettable. And I think that's what a lot of people are envisioning when they are rating books three stars is that they had a pretty decent reading experience with it so far, but it just wasn't anything to to raise the level. And to me, that's still not great. That is still forgettable. A really great example of this is a book that I recently read called The Secret Witness by Victor Methos. I like Victor Methos a lot. I think that he is really capable of writing strong legal thrillers. And The Secret Witness was compulsively readable from start to finish. It was an absolutely bingeable book. Like you just want to keep turning the pages and you absolutely want to know what happened. It was easy to fly through. It was basically a popcorn thriller read. But by the time I had stopped reading that book to the time I went to review the book, I could remember almost nothing about it. Not even the character's name. I could basically just remember that it was about a detective and a former prosecutor who was out hunting either a copycat serial killer or a serial killer who had returned. And I remembered ultimately who 
the killer was, but that's it. Like I couldn't remember anything else that happened in between. And that even makes me more mad because I love the reading experience of this book. It was a really positive, good time reading experience, but in the end it didn't leave a lasting impression on me. And that's what I want a book to do. That is why I read. I read for those lasting impressions. Now, do I go into a book wanting it to be a two stars? Never. I'm always really disappointed when a book turns out to be a two star because if I'm reading a book, I do not expect it to be a two star whatsoever. So anytime I do read a book of two stars, it is definitely a disappointing read. It's not what I expected it to be, but at least I'm taking something away from it. I have learned more about myself as a reader and what I like to read, but three stars to me don't contribute anything to my reading life whatsoever. So I honestly don't consider three star read a good rating. So to me, anything has to be a 3.5 and above in order to be considered a good rating. And so here we kind of get into those half star ratings because I do believe it's possible to have a book fall in the middle range. I typically have 2.5s, 3.5s, and 4.5s. And that's why it really, really irritates me that Goodreads does not offer half star ratings because it interferes with my ability to properly track my ratings on Goodreads. Now I know that some people don't believe in half star ratings at all and that's completely fine, but I do believe in half star ratings because there are absolutely times when I get done with a book and I'm completely stuck in the in-between. Like this was definitely good enough not to be a three, but it's not quite to the level of four. And so I want to put it smack dab at a 3.5 and I'm not able to do that on Goodreads unless I put it in the body of my review or I'm tracking it elsewhere in like my reading journal. So I do do half star ratings and a 3.5 star like I kind of just mentioned is a book that was an overall positive reading experience and it's not quite a forgettable book. Like I'm probably going to solidly remember that book for quite a while but it wasn't to four star tier. It wasn't quite to that level where I could consider this a great book one that I'm going to constantly be recommending to people. So it just kind of falls in the in-between there. Okay so moving on into four stars. Now a four star reading is a book that I would consider an almost favorite. It is absolutely a book that I'm going to be recommending to people. It is a book that was a solid reading experience from start to finish so that probably means that it was well paced. I was usually never bored. I was invested in the story in the characters and overall not only did I have a really good time reading it there was something about the book that made a lasting impression. Typically a four star doesn't reach the 4.5 or the five star level because it's lacking a couple of things like there might be a couple of things I wish had been done differently whether that's something in the plot like I really didn't like a direction that a plot took whether it's the length like for example I recently read the it girl by Ruth Ware and I really enjoyed that from start to finish I thought it was a very strong reading experience but it was very very long and I felt like if it had been cut down by like at least 50 pages that book could have possibly gotten a higher rating from me but also there was also a lack of emotional connection I didn't feel emotionally connected to the story or the character so it probably would have never reached that 4.5 or that 5 tier so there were definitely a few technical things that could have been done a lot differently to make it that 4.5 or the 5 star now legitimately the only thing that separates a 4.5 and a 5 star for me is emotional connection meaning I loved absolutely everything about the story but in the end it didn't gut me emotionally and pretty much that's what a book has to do in order for me to give it a five stars so you're almost never going to see me rate like a suspense thriller five stars even though those are my favorite genres of books I'm almost never going to rate them a five stars because those books are not about emotion they're not about character connection and you very rarely find a purely character driven suspense thriller that gives you the in-depth look into the characters the complex character dynamics that I love and crave so if I rate a book of 4.5 that means it did almost everything right for me it was just missing that piece of emotional connection that I need for the book it could also mean that there was part of the plot that I just also really didn't enjoy and I think that it could have gone into a better and more different direction but again that's that's very very personal that's a very very subjective thing as are these entire rating systems right but like if I was really emotionally connected to a book but there was still a piece of the plot that I really just didn't like and I didn't really understand why it was in there I'm more likely to rate that a 4.5 and a 5 and of course if I rate a book five stars that means the book was perfect for me do I think it was perfect in general with absolutely nothing that could be changed probably not but that means it hit all of my buttons. It had complex and dynamic characters and those characters had complicated relationships with other characters. There was a strong solid plot that kept me engaged throughout. I kept wanting to turn the pages. I was invested and I wanted to know what happened. And also a lot of the times these books are very thought-provoking and they make you think and you will remember that and you will take that away from the book after you're done reading. So some of the more recent five stars that I can name are Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby which was definitely a story of vengeance. It was very violent and gritty and dark but it had so many things that I love and I need because the characters in that book were obviously very flawed. They were morally gray characters. They were doing a lot of the wrong things for the right reasons and you rooted for them. Like you wanted them to have their vengeance. And I loved that because it makes you a morally gray reader. It makes you think about those morals. What should be a crime? What should not be a crime? Would you seek vengeance if your children were brutally murdered? Would you want to trust the justice system or would you want to take it into your own hands? That is the perfect example of a book that really makes you think and question what it is you're reading, but yet you still can't help but root for them. Kristen Hannah almost consistently gets five stars from me because she does 
characters like no others. Her books are so incredibly in-depth and detailed. They're well-researched, they're heart-wrenching, they're harrowing, they're raw. They put you in a situation that you don't want to be in and so you can just feel the atmosphere around you whether you're in Alaska and you're feeling the cold and the isolation and the desperation or whether you're on the Great Plains and you're suffering from the Dust Bowl and you can feel the dust in your lungs and you can just feel the despair and the hopelessness as everything around you is dying and you're trying to feed your children and you're trying to get them to survive. Kristen Hanna takes you and she puts you in the settings that she's writing about and you can just feel like those characters are real. Same with Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've rated two of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books five stars and that's always because her characters just jump off the page to me and they feel so real and I'm so emotionally connected to her characters. I also recently rated Every Summer After and Part of Your World five stars. Those are contemporary romances and they were just so hard hitting and they just tug at your heartstrings and they just made my chest ache because I could feel what the characters were feeling and I was rooting for the characters and I wanted to see them happy. So those are just strong examples of five star reads that I have done to give you an example of how I kind of rate books five stars. So that is it. That is my rating system in a nutshell. I definitely do rate my books based on entertainment value. Entertainment is a huge part of how I rate books but it is not the only part and I cannot rate books on entertainment alone. I think if I rated books on entertainment alone a lot more of my books would be four and five stars because a lot of the books I read I find very entertaining but they're not substantial enough for me to rate them four or five stars. I need a book to be substantial. A lot of the times I need it to be harder hitting. I need it to get me in my feels in order for it to be a four or five stars and a book that is just entertaining is not going to do that for me. So entertaining is a chunk of it but it's not all of it. Like I said I also look heavily at the characters that are in the story. Do they feel real? Do they feel relatable? Do they feel well developed? And I don't mean relatable as in you understand the circumstances that they're in, that you've been there, that you've done that, but you can understand why they do what they do and the decisions that they're making. Are there also interesting and dynamic character relationships in the story? What about the plot? Is there a purpose, an overall purpose to the plot? Because even though I'm a character driven reader, there has to be some kind of end goal. There has to be some kind of purpose to what I'm reading. If I get done with the book and I don't understand why this book was written, like what the message the author was trying to portray is, I'm going to rate that lower than I might have otherwise rated it because I need to understand why I'm reading a book and why this book is out there in the world. So entertainment, characters, plot, and definitely, definitely the writing style. I appreciate authors that know how to use words and who know how to weave them into just beautiful sentences. I'm not necessarily talking about purple prose or flowery writing because a lot of the time that can be very overdone and overwhelming where every single sentence is a metaphor or things like that. And I'm just like, no, can we stop? But it's also not very basic, short, simple sentences like the fox jumped, the fox went in the woods, you know, things like that. So you can tell a book that has very beautiful non-basic writing and that's also kind of what I'm looking for. So those are probably the four things that I'm looking for in the books that I'm reading. So now it's your turn y'all. I'm opening up the stage to you. What are some of the things that you look for in books? How do you rate them? Like what is a five star read for you? What is a three star read for you? Do you consider three stars to be a good rating? I want to know. I'm probably in the minority here but I don't think a three star is a good rating and I'm going to die on this hill y'all. I'm going to die on this hill. I would much rather read a two star read than a three star read and that is just my take on it. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What are your rating systems and what do you look for in books? And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and there's a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.